So, last time we covered the Atlas, the most iconic Mac in the universe, arguably. Something anyone can recognize, you know. But how did it get there? How did we all get to the Atlas, you know? How did Mac research and technology reach to a point where the people of Battletech are able to create battle mechs like the Atlas? Let's go back. Back to where it all began. Back to the first true battle mech. Back to the Mac. Now, mechs were already a thing in the mid-2300s. They were all industrial mechs first, you know, mechs designed to help with civilian industry, you know, building, cargo, forestry, things that keep the wheels turning, the wheels of uh, society, economy turning, I guess. It wasn't until 2439 where the first mech for military purpose was created. The MSK-5S, or Mackey, was developed by the Terran Hegemony Armed Forces under the direct supervision of Director General Jacob Cameron. Look at this guy. Look at that mullet. Is that a mullet? I think that's a mullet. Those glasses. It's beautiful. <laughs> they have been working on the Mac for decades and it took over 20 of Terra's best weapons companies to develop the Mac. It was only at 2439 where the first functioning prototype was tested at the Yakima Firing Center at Washington. I'm sure there's a very specific reason why Yakima, Washington was the place they chose or is... And it could be just a random place, but I don't know who wrote this. <laughs> I love that Yakima. Seems like a nice town. Is it? I don't know. But anyway, during the tests, the first ever mech warrior, Charles Kincaid, fought and destroyed four remote-controlled Merkava tanks in a live fire test. Seeing how effective the mech was, Director General Jacob Cameron immediately diverted a big percentage of the Germany's funds into starting production lines for the Mackie. This almost ruined the entire economy <laughs> for the Germany. Scoble Corporation, later Scoble Mech Works, was awarded the contract, and with the funds given, they were able to build six factories, or at least six factories on Terra. Somehow, some way, they were able to keep the mech a secret until like four years later in 2443. It was when the Draconis Combine raided the planet Styx that Jacob Cameron authorized the deployment of the 801st Heavy Armor Regiment, possibly the first ever like mech unit, or one of the first at least, to you know, fight them off. Lieutenant Colonel Amanda Cunningham led the unit and completely crushed the Karitan forces. It was here when the wider world was made known to the existence of battle mechs. For a full decade, the Germany military completely dominated the battlefields. But in 2455, the Lirans managed to steal the blueprints of the Mackie, and within four years, they were able to produce and deploy their own Mackies. This is the exact moment when Pandora's box was open for the Battletech universe. Now, appearance-wise, the Mackie looks like one of those classic robot toys. You know, it's got the design is simple. You know, it's got a boxy body. Doesn't really have any arms. Well, the right arm is kind of it's kind of an arm, but not really. But anyway, I basically got two guns just sticking out the side, and the head is just a dome with one-way plexiglass at the front. I don't know if plexiglass is a good thing for military purposes, but hey, plexiglass, yeah. <laughs> But uh, the boxy body made it easy to mess with the internals though, because you know it's it's, it's a box. It's simple, you know. You know if you want to switch armor, just 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 pop it on and put it back on. You don't need to bend armor to fit a specific shape, you know, like modern mechs. And you know, it's the internal is probably you know a lot of space around because you know it's just a box. It's a box. The box is a pretty good shape, huh? Now I've been advised or asked on a previous video comment to uh what do you call that include the bv the battle value the second version and clearly specify if there are any quirks for the uh for the mechs now these two things they mainly concern the gameplay aspect of Altec, like if you play the tabletop version maybe oh well, maybe the uh the quirks can be, be you know lore it, it is somewhat lore wise i guess but battle value is uh it's just a point for the games i guess so Let's say you have a match, you're about to play a game with a max battle value of 5,000. So basically this means that all players have 5,000 points that they can spend on units 
you know, so they can't exceed 5,000 points. So within that 5,000 point limit, you can do whatever you want. You want, want, want max, you want planes, you want infantry, whatever you want, as long as it doesn't exceed battle value 5,000 or the set battle value for that match, I guess. Anyway, let's get into the uh, the design, I guess. Let's continue the design of the mechs. So the mech weighs 100 tons. For this chassis, it uses a Ford Super HQWA3X. The same Ford we all know and love. Probably, I don't know. Who's a Ford guy? I'm a Ford guy. I like Ford. Mustang's pretty cool. I like the old stuff as well. The old stuff, even better. It's powered by a Hermes 360 engine, which propels it to a top speed of 54 kilometers per hour. It's targeting on the comm systems, or for, I mean for this one, for the prototype at least, is unknown. But at its time, it was described as the best system in the entire hemisphere. Notable quirks of this mech includes it's easy to maintain, which means you get a bonus for repair and maintenance rolls. It's got protected actuators, which means it's protected against, uh, what do you call that? Uh, infantry bell armor for the legs. Like they get a negative roll, like a penalty roll, if they want to attack your legs. It's rugged, which means it doesn't need to be maintained too often. But it's oversized, which is a negative work, which means it's easier to get a hit on it. So you know, the enemy will get a positive, I guess, a bonus to hit you. And you also get a penalty if you try to go through tight spaces. The armor and the heat sink count are different per variant, so let's jump into those right now. The first variant being the prototype, the MSK-5S, was introduced in 2439. The mech is entirely made from primitive technologies. This just means the things are just not as good as you know, current standard models. The cockpit is primitive, the engine is primitive, but you know it's still able to travel at 54 kilometers. Even the armor is primitive at 20 tons. Weapons-wise, it carries a prototype PPC on the left arm. This prototype version, it... it it generates, it, it, it generates a lot more heat than the standard one. It has an AC5 on the right, with 20 shots stored in the right torso. And they got a large laser in the center. I think it's that little hole right there. Their prototype has 17 heat sinks and costs about 2.9 million. Then we move on to the first production variant, the MSK6S. This is the model that they mass produce after the pro whole prototype uh, you know, successful run thingy. It is largely the same as the prototype, except for its weapons and heatsink crown. It got rid of two heatsinks, so you got uh, 15, to make way for an AC-10 on the right arm instead of AC-5. It still got 20 shots stored in the right torso. And instead of a large laser, a single one, it has two mediums on its PP. The prototype PPC remains. The first proper battle mat costs 9.3 million. Next, we have the MSK-7A. Now, apparently there are multiple 7 models out there, but, you know, that, that's not... I couldn't find any information about them. This is this 7A is just the only one that's known. It was introduced around 2488. This variant is the first modern variant, I guess, because the cockpit is a standard model. The engine is also a standard model, and the armor is also standard. It's got 19 tons of armor, which means it's actually on part of the Atlas. <laughs> The engine is standard, but the speed is still the same at 54 kilometers. It is equipped with 21 heat sinks to help cool down the two large lasers on each side of its torso. So instead of a PP, this one has titties. <laughs> there is a PPC on the left arm, which also has a hand attached to it. So you got left, you got, you got, you got, you got left, arm, left, left hand to to touch your titties. <laughs> and on the right, you get an AC20 with 20 shots stored in the right torso. This one costs 9.2 million. It's slightly cheaper than the US version. Next, we have the 8B, which is just a retrofit uh, of the 6S to bring it up to current standard of the time, at least. This particular A series, th th there's multiple. Again, like so the 7 series, it it's got, there's multiple uh, series. This one's the B version. The rest, no idea how they are like. But this particular one made its appearance in 2576. It's like a full century later. That's a long time, actually. Jeez. <laughs> it's almost identical to 7A, actually, except it has an additional 0.5 tons of armor and different weapons. They got rid of the left hand, and they put another PPC on the left arm. So they got two PPCs on the left arm. The AC-20 is there, but the ammo is now inside case. 
and the two large laser TTs were removed and they gave the mech its two medium PPs back. This one costs 9.5 million. And finally, we have the final production model. This is the last variant before they completely stop producing Mackies. The 9H has some flavor text made for it, which is pretty cool, you know? The chassis is the Ford Super H QWA5, so I guess the next generation of the same chassis, I guess, because the before it was a WX3. This one is A5. I guess X is experimental, I guess, so now it's standard. It's now an A. It is powered by the Vlar 300 engine, the same one in the Atlas. That's pretty cool. The speed remains the same, 54 kilometers. It has 19 tons of star shield armor, and its communications and targeting are the Dalban Comline and FOI Scansys 7, respectively. Made in the same year as uh, the 8H, this variant is a pr proper production model, unlike the 8H, which was, you know, just an upgrade kit for all the variants. This one comes with 20 single heat sinks. Its weapons are two Donal PPCs on the left arm. On the right, you get an Imperator Zeta AC-20 with 20 shots inside case, and it also has two Star Flash medium PPs. I think it's safe to assume that these like weapons models are the same one as the H, and possibly even the 7 as well. Other than that, you get an active bagel probe on the left torso. Let's move on to the customs, and there's only one, and it's used as a mascot for the Marshall Olympia. It's basically like a Mech Olympics. You know like the, the, the Russian like tank Olympic they do? Like every year. It's that, but Max. The MSH 8HKR Mackie Kill Roy's Little Buddy. That's its full name. <laughs> it comes with 13 double heat sinks. Weapons wise, it's mostly the same as the 9H, except for the emission of the AC20 on the right, which is left empty. There's nothing on the right, it's just. It's gone. It's like, you, you get no. You get no right arm for this one. Instead, you get two LBX-10s, one on each side of the torso, with 10 shots of slugs and 10 shots of cluster inside case. It's got two PPs, the medium's still there, and it's got TDs. It's a foot. This one costs 10.7 million. There's not a lot of novel pilots for the Mackie, weirdly enough. You think something like this would have a lot, but it's not. <laughs> There's only three I could find. First, you have the aforementioned Colonel Charles Kincaid, the first ever mech warrior. Charles grew up with a military family. His family's history goes all the way back to the Second World War. He graduated from a preparatory school before he enrolled into West Point, the same West Point. Kincaid turned out to be a very skilled tactician and a charismatic leader, and when he graduated, he joined the Hegemony Armed Forces with the rank of captain. When it came time to test the Mackie, Kincaid's family pulled strings to make sure that Charles would be selected. His family was rich and was linked to you know, the weapons industry. They also had a close relationship with the Cameron family, the ruling family of the Hegemony. While the test was successful, it turned out the Nero helmet used by Kincaid had a major flaw with its design. And this flaw caused neurological damage to Charles. He attained a rank colonel and led a mech company within the 801st Heavy Regiment and was involved in the defense of sticks against the Combine. After this, however, he had to be regulated to realign duties until his death due to brain cancer. Then we have Amanda Cunningham. There's not much known about her actually. Uh, she was King Kate's mistress and was involved in the defense of sticks. And finally, we have a Jade Falcon Clanner called Star Commander Horse. His, his name is Horse because he likes horses. <laughs> his real name is Tile. He was a freeborn, so he was conceived through normal means. If you don't know that, uh, I think I mentioned it before, maybe I did, I don't know. But in clan society, you got the trueborn and you got the freeborn. The trueborn are like the, the noble class, I guess. These guys were born in, in, in tubes. They were born in tubes, yes. They, they, like, they, they get the two, they, they get two like previous good clanners I guess and they they they, they, make, they mix it up in a tube and and off they go true born yeah freeborn is 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 just, just normal normal sex I guess they're seen as the lower class anyway this guy horse he's a novel character so there's a lot about him <laughs> I don't want to go too deep into him because one I haven't read the books yet 
I'm already re I've already committed myself to the Horus Heresy series, and I've just started reading A Song of Ice and Fire, so I don't know when I'm gonna read this book, uh, the books he's involved in. <laughs> and two, this is a mech video. It's not it's a deep dive to his character, so <laughs> let's not go too deep too deep into that. Or I'm gonna end up with a video that's like one hour, hour long, and I don't want that to do that again or again so soon, I guess. So I'm just gonna mention when he piloted the uh, mech, I guess. He piloted a an old Mackie during a duel with Star Colonel Logan Worth of Clan Smoke Jaguar, and he barely won against him. So as mentioned just now in the Night Hage variant, they start producing the Mackie when the Maru's coup happened. Krensky he even took around a hundred with him when he left when when the Exodus happened. Any remaining ones were put in museums across the uh, Indosphere. Some are still operational, while others aren't. There was one Mac key that was used by a student from the Robinson Bell, Bell uh, Academy during their defense of Robinson. Other than that, I don't think it's too far-fetched to think that maybe a defense force from a very def backwater planet or something, you know, like a militia or something, a local militia on a very, very poor planet somewhere. Maybe they got one lying around somewhere, who knows. That'd be pretty cool though. <laughs> I mean, it's still a... It's still a pretty... It's still a pretty capable mech, man. It's got 20 tons of armor. Or 19 tons of armor, man. It's got AC-20. It's pretty good. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, who knows. Now, the Mackie is considered extinct in universe, but in Mac HQ, Again, Mac HQ is not an official thing, but they do use inf official information, so maybe it is official, I don't know. Uh, the 7A, according to the Mac HQ at least, the 7A never went extinct, you can still buy it. The 8B and 9H did go extinct for a time, but after uh, towards the mid uh, like 3000s, you can buy them again. I This might just be for game purposes, or they did continue it, producing it on that one factory they still have on Terra. I'm not entirely sure. Now, I can't say I have a lot of experience with it. I think I faced it like once. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I mean, it's still an assault mech, so... And, it, uh, it's, uh, like, like I mentioned just now, it's got Atlas armor, so it's not something you can just completely ignore. It's still gonna be a threat if you face one. Plus, it's got an AC-20. Like, that thing will never be dangerous. Well, it'll never be not dangerous. You know? It's also got two PPCs, so, you know, if, you, if, if from a distance it can shoot its PPCs, if you get close enough, it's gonna shoot AC-20, so it's not like it's it's harmless. It, it, it will throw a big heavy punch if you're not careful. But just imagine, right, being one of the first, like, being one of like the combine soldiers, like seeing this thing coming at you, four giant walk, like four giants walking towards your position while blasting your tanks apart. It's gotta be some kind of biblical scene, right? <laughs> That'd be scary, very. But uh, yeah, Mackie, probably the most important mech ever, considering it started everything. I'm quite surprised not much info about it, like, you know, all the variants or history about it, or even pilots, considering, you know, how, how, how important it is, maybe? I don't know, I'm totally sure. Maybe this is not much to give because it's such a limiting mech, I guess, in terms of design. Maybe? I'm not totally sure. Uh... They did mention that the 7 and 8 series is, isn't exactly uniform, so you know, there's like multiple variants of the 7 and 8 series, but uh, uh, none of them is like listed, except for the ones that are listed, the, the two that are listed, I guess. Maybe they'll expand it one, on it one day, or not, I don't know, I don't think there's a lot of, there's not a lot of demand for that, but uh, there's not a lot of demand for the Gladiator to be expanded, and they did. They, they did the 7 and the 9. Maybe they'll do it for the Mackie one day. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? But uh, other than that, that's been that. That's been me. I think that's a pretty short one. Pretty good change compared to what happened last video. <laughs> I don't want to do another one hour long video if I can help it, but I'm pretty damn sure there's going to be another one coming up soon. Maybe. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, but anyway, yeah. That, that's ended there, right? I got Discord. Got me Discord if you want to... Chang, Chang, you want to chat and hang out? I'm there. Occasionally. Twitch, if you want to support me on my streamer dreams, I'm there too. Hey, thank you. If you did. 
come over, huh? <laughs> but other than that, that's been me, that's been that. I've said that like three times now, but take care, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye.